Father dear, I often hear you speak of Erin's Isle. Her lofty scenes, her valleys green, her mountains rude and wild. They say it is a lovely land wherein a prince might dwell. Then why did you abandon it? Oh, the reason to me tell. Over 175 years ago in the early 19th century, a famine spread throughout the British colony of Ireland. The poor people of the land had less than ever to put on the family table. Before it was over, the blight would claim over one million Irish lives. And rather than feed their starving tenants, the landlords sold their corn, wheat, and oat as cattle feed in England and Scotland. Soon, these British nobles began to evict tenant farmers from their cottages to open land for pasture. Nearly two million Irish men and women would flee the great hunger and English oppression and set sail across the Atlantic to the golden door of America, La Puerta del Sol. It's 1845. The Great Famine, La Gran Hambruna, has begun. This is Little Known Legends, Episode 1, The Irish Rover. There is still time to change your mind, Lachlan. My mind's made up. I can't sit here for some English fop to string me up for starving. Not when there's a chance for something better. Oh, you'll see. When I come back, I'll be richer than ten Englishmen. No one ever returns. I've got to try, don't I? Da, don't I got to try? He's making the right decision, Governor, and I don't make it harder on the boy. If I could, I'd take the whole family across. But how will you survive? A daughter dead? A- another son drug off in chains? I can't bear it! What good is it just to survive? I've lived longer than most of me friends, haven't I? Who's left that the blight hasn't killed, or the English taken to God knows where? Oh, I'll survive just fine. I'll find my way. You best get on board before the ship fills up. You promise us you'll be good. Make us proud of you. I promise. And don't forget, no matter where your head rests, you're an Irishman and a Catholic, through and through. Let that be a source of pride for you. Never be ashamed. Hold Aaron close. As close as you would the Blessed Mother. And never forget us. I won't. Your family's always looking in on you, Lachlan. Your grandfathers, your grandmothers, those that went before them and the ones before them as well. And there's us too. You make us all proud. You do the right thing, even when it's the hardest thing to do. Especially then. That's when it's the most important. I will. Swear to it, Lachlan. Here, take this. Your rosary? I can't. Too many of your prayers are on You it. take it. And on these beads and on the Blessed Mother, you swear to remember all we taught you. About being a good person. About doing what is right and good, no matter how hard it is. When you remember us, when you think of home, you hold these beads in your hands. And remember. Swear it, son. I swear it. To you and Shan Oher and Shan Moher. And Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and everyone else. Kneel before your parents, son, and make the sign. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. May you see God's light on the path ahead, and the road you walk is dark. May you always hear, even in your hour of sorrow, the gentle singing of the lark. When times are hard, may hardness never turn your heart to stone. For when shadows fall, remember, you do not walk alone. Now go find a home that can take care of you. Get them stones and bricks and hold, Bill. Quit that dallying. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir. Do you happen to be the captain? You ain't got enough, boy. 
and we're filled to the brim with folks such as yourself. So keep walking. Wait, sir. Psst. Hey, kid. Give me what you got, and I'll get you on that ship. Oh, it's heading to the States, yeah? Next stop, New York City. <laughs> okay, then. Here you go. Great. Crawl into this barrel seat. Wait, what? Trust until we get into the ocean, and then you can crawl about. But mind you, be careful. Don't you get seen. How do I do that? See, now, the way I think of it, that's what I call a you problem. No, no, you don't understand me. Best of luck, kid. All aboard! Let's get sailing! With adverse winds or bad weather, the journey to the United States could take as long as 14 weeks. The ships are crowded and disease-ridden, and many immigrants dreaming of a better life died on these boats, earning them the notorious nickname Coffin Ship. On the 4th of July, 1845, we set sail from the street from the port. We were sailing away with the cargo of bricks for the Grand City Hall in New York. Twas a wonderful craft, she was rigged for and that, and oh how the wild winds drove her. She had stood several blasts, she had twenty-seven masts, and we called her the Irish Rover. Take your hats off, boys. Bring them over here, will ya? In nomine Patris, et Fili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. God rest the soul of poor Barney O'Sullivan. Tom McGee. God rest the soul of poor old Tom McGee. He was a good fella for what we knew of him. The Lord take his body, and the devil take this ship fever. Let me go. Come on, ya. Get off! We'll see what the captain says. What's all this, then? We got us a stowaway, Captain! We're short-handed as it is, Captain. Give this one a mop and a bucket and make him earn his pay, same as the rest of us. Mm. Well, if it breaks something, I'm taking it out of your pay, Brendan. Well, nothing out of nothing will be a heavy fine, but I think I can cover him. That smart mouth will cost you one of these days. Back to work, the lot of you! Thanks for that. Blight our Brits. Plenty killing us Irish these days. No need for us to be killing each other. You're paying your way to the United States. Yeah. Had enough of fighting for the Queen, so thought I'd try my luck in the new world. You're a soldier then? Oh, must be exciting. Don't believe the poems and the songs, kiddo. Ain't nothing romantic about the life. Folk like you and me, nothing but cannon father, you see. God willing, the US will give me a chance to earn a more peaceful trade. Got a name, do you? Lachlan. Brendan, you got any folks in the United States? I got no one. Well, you stick with me then, kiddo. We'll get to the new world and who knows? Life's easier when you don't gotta struggle by yourself, right? Squall! Squall! Batten down the hatches! To be Irish in the 1840s in New York City is to be equal parts reviled and necessary. A refugee of oppression and hunger, looking for that new life that turns out to be just like the old one. Out of the way, you idiot! This way, boy, don't have your head on such a swivel. You ever seen such a sight, Brendan? All these buildings! And the people! Ah, if you've seen London, you've seen grander. Come on, let's find us some lodging. How much money you got in you? None. Well, that's a problem now, isn't it? Yes, sir. It's a new life, ain't it? Just like the old one. Especially for the poor. Your life is defined by a very limited set of desperate choices. And desperate people make for easy targets. Hey there, Patty. What do you know? What do you say? Me? Sure you. Why not you? Come on over here and let me offer you the chance of a lifetime. Pay him no mind, Lachlan. You don't want what he's selling. Believe me, it ain't worth the cost. 
My good man, you offend me. I'm no devil. Little more than a humble civil servant. Rest assured, my Fenian friends, I'm quite on the level. Now, you've been on the boat how long? Two months. And now you're here. The United States of America. Don't it feel great? Don't it feel grand? Don't you want to just give old New York City a hand? Yes, sir. It's a new life for you now, ain't it? So what's your plans, boyo? Your scheme, your hustle, your flow. How you gonna make that green? Make that dough? After all, this is the United States of America. From sea to soon to be shining sea, the most important color is green. I don't really know. The boy's not even 18. Not a good thing. Not a good thing at all. You're lucky you found me. Listen, you hear that call? What call? Well, you're an Irishman through and through? A real son of Erin? A true wild goose? Of course. Can you shoot? Yeah. Then does Uncle Sam have a job for you? Why, at this very moment, at this very second, we have pay. We have pension. We can even make you a United States citizen. Are you a citizen? Then come with me. Get legal. Get documented. Get all them unalienable rights our blessed forefathers cemented. Amendments one through whatever. They're here to protect you. Join with me and you can start over. Brand new. What do we have to do? Do? Why you only have to join the most prestigious, most glamorous, most amazing military force on the planet. I left that life in the old world, mister. And the kid here isn't cut for it. If you'll kindly let us I beg our way. to differ, sir. I beg to differ. And why waste your God-given talents? You Irish were bred for it. It is in your blood. Picture you and you in cobalt blue. Shiny brown best musket in your hand. You. From where? Some no-name village in a starving land? You. A member of the U.S. Army. Now how does that sound? I made a promise that I'd be a good Catholic man. Thou shalt not kill. Fighting in the name of the Almighty is a noble act for any soul seeking redemption. Our brave soldiers are doing the Lord's work. It's divine intervention. Sure to get the Almighty's attention. What more could your dear mother ask of her young boy? And on top of that, poverty, crime, a life of destitution. The U.S. Army is a world free of all of that. For the peculiar predicament of the Aaron immigrant, it is the best solution. I've heard this speech before, more than once, and I made the mistake of being swayed by it. Come on, Rock. Listen up, Patty. Don't mistake my golden tongue for a forked one. What I say is true. Out there, ain't no one gonna help you. Go and see if you need. But trust me, a mick like you, a place like this, no choice but the five points. And you don't want none of that abyss. You came here for freedom. You came here for work. You came looking for a safe place to lay your head. The U.S. Army is here for the both of you. Keep you warm. Keep you safe. Keep you fed. What do you say, Brandon? For the last time, I say no thank you. I am not interested. All right. Go on, then. See what you can do. But if you want to be more than an Oriental, or an African, or a Jew, if you want to transcend to the highest peak, the shining city on the hill, this here's your only chance. Let's get real. I'll stick with my friend. Best of luck, then. Best of luck. You'll change your mind, I have no doubt. And I'll be right here, waiting, pen in hand, just hanging out. Say there, Patty. What do you know? What do you say? Well, he was right about one thing. Ain't no place for us but the five points. Maybe we'll find us some cheap lodging there. They say that in America, it always is the plan. That an Irishman is just as good as any other man. A home in hospitality. They never will deny To strangers here or ever say No Irish need apply
In the infamous neighborhood of the Five Points, Lachlan and Brendan will find refuge in the old brewery, a factory of disease and death, where a murder happens every night. Eventually, they'll opt to sleep in alleyways and rooftops rather than take their chances in that hill. They'll spend weeks struggling to find work, struggling to find food. Time and again, they'll pass signs telling them to keep moving. Their help isn't wanted here. They'll pass nativist politicians on apple carts talking to throngs of citizens and working hard for their allegiance and votes. American citizens, already the enemies of our dearest institutions are within our gates. They are disgorging themselves upon us at the rate of hundreds or thousands every year. They aim at nothing short of conquest and supremacy over us. It's our right as a sovereign nation to choose immigrants that we think are the likeliest to thrive and flourish and love us. We are burdened by enormous taxes by foreigners. We are tempered with in our religion. We are injured in our labor. We are assailed in our freedom of speech. We are corrupted in the morals of our youth. After years of mass immigration, falling wages, and surging joblessness, isn't it time we focused on the needs of the people living here today? Isn't it time we got our own people back to work? Our institutions are at the mercy of a body of foreigners. We are the dupes of our own hospitality. When Ireland sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. Say there, Patty. What do you know? What do you say? You'll make me a citizen. Get you documented. Give me a job. Put a roof over my head. Keep you warm. Keep you safe. Keep you fed. Here's my book. All you gotta do is sign. Right here on the line. I can't read or write. Just make your mark. That will be just fine. Your turn, Brendan. On the battlefield, a lasting fame is made. You all have heard of Meagle's men and Corrigan's brigade. Though fools may flout and bigots rave, fanatics they may cry. But when they want good fighting men, the Irish may apply. <laughs> Little Known Legends was produced by Radical Evolution. That's me, Maropi Peponides. And me, Beto O'Byrne. The series was written by Beto O'Byrne and directed by Kinan Valdez, with music direction by Chaz Croslin and audio editing and sound design by Danny Perez. Lead music recording engineer is Emiliano Valdez. Performances in this episode by Katrina Valdez, Shane English, Una Clancy, Sean Gormley, Seth Millwood, Joseph Jones, Ed Malone, Arisael Rivera, Richard Lovejoy, and Adam Files. This series is in memory of Noé Yacuat Montoya. Presente, maestro. We miss you. For more information on Radical Evolution and the team, and to get in touch with us, visit RadicalEvolution.org. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for our next episode. Radical Evolution.